Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Steven, the 918 agent, and we are going over the things to do in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're going to be covering three categories. We're going to be covering events, entertainment. We're going to be covering parks, and we're going to be covering nightlife slash restaurants, places to go after dark. So if you need to get a hold of me, you can give me... You can give me a contact right there. You can either send me an email or uh, text me or call me. I will help you with anything I can regarding doing with Tulsa or actually anything. Just reach out. Um, I can help you. And then also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Uh, it helps me out a ton, and I appreciate you guys doing that for me. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into not five, but the things to do here in Tulsa. Let's get it rolling. Okay, the first place we're gonna talk about under entertainment is the BOK. So the BOK was built in 2008, and that's basically our big event center here in Tulsa. It's located in downtown Tulsa, and it holds up to 19,000 people. The type of events that we have at the BOK are like concerts, basketball games, uh, ice hockey games. And actually, that is our only permanent resident, and that is our minor league hockey team, the Tulsa Oilers. Now, we get a lot of headlining acts. So I'm talking about big name you know, musicians. For example, coming in 2021, we have Justin Bieber, we have Kiss, we have Chris Stapleton, The Weeknd, Dan and Shay. And even, even Joe Rogan. Hey, Joe. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be on his podcast one day. See you, Joe. Another place downtown that you can go to for entertainment is what we call our Tulsa PAC. Now, PAC stands for Performing Arts Center. And like I said, it's located in our downtown area. It houses four main theaters, a studio space, an art gallery, and even a sizable reception hall. The center regularly hosts events from 14 local performance groups like the Tulsa Ballet, Tulsa Opera, Tulsa Symphony, and Celebrity Attractions. That's our Broadway series. And in that Broadway series, we get a lot of, once again, headlining acts. We've hosted Wicked, uh, The Book of Mormon, Lion King, a fan of the opera. So we still get all those big acts, even though we're, some people think we're in a small city like Tulsa, Oklahoma. We like our Broadway musicals. Now, if you don't like arts and you don't like the musicals and you don't like music and concerts, I have something for you. And that's just a little bit north in our Greenwood district. And that is One Oak Field. So all my sports fans out there for you. So we actually have a minor league baseball team called the Tulsa Drillers. One Oak Field is located, like I said, in the Greenwood District, and it is beautiful, beautiful. Uh, the Drillers are part of the minor league, uh, minor league baseball for L.A. Dodgers. So they're one of the L.A. Dodgers farm teams. I think they're double A, but I'm not 100% sure. Now, if you don't like baseball, we do have another option for you at One Oak Field. We have the Tulsa Roughnecks, Roughnecks, and that is our minor league soccer team. Uh, they came, they've been established for a couple of years now, and uh, let me tell you, the fans are crazy about their soccer here in Tulsa. It's a lot of fun to go to the soccer games at One Oak Field. So if you don't like art and you don't like music and uh, you want, you need a little bit of sports in your life, go check out One Oak Field and check out your Tulsa Drillers and your Tulsa Roughnecks. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into our parks. Um, our first park is, I'm sorry, I'm going to start with the best, and that is the Gathering Place. You probably guys are sick of me talking about the Gathering Place, but it is really, really nice and something that I recommend everyone to go to. It was built and opened in September of 2018. Uh, it is south of downtown, and it's on the east bank of the Arkansas River. It's approximately 100 acres as of 2018, and it cost $465 million to construct. Some of the main attractions of the gathering place is Chapman Adventure, Adventure Playground, the Williams Lodge, a boathouse, 
Splash Playground, The Great Lawn, Outdoor Sports Courts, a Skate Park, and a Wetland and Pond Garden. It has numerous of trails uh, to other locations like our river trails and other places like that. There are plenty of activities for kids and adults. Uh, some of the awards that the Gathering Place uh, have, have won is it was voted Best New Attraction in the Nation in 2018 from U.S. Today readers. And in 2019, it made Times Magazine list for the world's 100 greatest places of 2019. It's a place that everyone needs to experience, and I haven't told you the best part yet. It is completely free. Okay, so the next place I'm going to talk about isn't free, but you still need to check out, and that is the Tulsa Zoo. The Tulsa Zoo is located just north of Tulsa and actually just north of our uh, airport, which yes, Tulsa does have an airport. Um, it's located inside of Mohawk Park, and Mohawk Park is actually the largest municipal park in the United States. I don't know what municipal means, and I don't even know if I pronounced it right, so let me know in the comment section below if I totally butchered that, and be nice, please be nice. Um, so the Tulsa Zoo, like I said, is uh is a great place me and my family have a membership there and we go there quite a bit they have all the animals you can ever think of and actually they just launched a new attraction and it is called the lost kingdom exhibit complex the lost kingdom allows guests to roam through lush gardens and settings inspired by ancient asian culture such as the city of anark walk uh, Lost Kingdom is the new home for ambassadors of some of Asia's rarest and most exclusive species, um, including snow leopards, Chinese alligators, and uh, Komodo dragons, which they're really, really cool. That's actually my son's favorite ex exhibit is the Komodo dragon. So you have to check it out. Like I said, the Lost Kingdom exhibit at the Tulsa Zoo. It's a lot of fun, and you need to go check it out. Now, the last thing... Uh, isn't really a park but it's kind of like a park and it's not really outside but it's inside it has to do with animals and that is the oklahoma aquarium uh the local oklahoma aquarium is actually south of tulsa well it's still in tulsa but it's in their south or south tulsa and it's in our jinx riverwalk area um the, the oklahoma aquarium it was built in 2002 and is actually part of our Vision 2025. Um, but let me talk about what the Oklahoma Aquarium has to offer. Uh, it is home to the world's largest exhibit of bull sharks, as well as longhead sea turtles, zebra sharks, and humphead wars. And as of 2020, the aquarium has more than 500 species and 10,000 animals. Now, the Oklahoma Aquarium is one of those hidden gems, at least for me, because I forget about it sometimes, and I don't go as often as I need to, unlike the Tulsa Zoo, because we live pretty close to the Tulsa Zoo. But no, it's still a place that people need to go and check it out. It is fantastic and is located in the Jinx Riverwalk area. Okay, so now we're going to talk about restaurants and nightlife. So in my opinion, there's a lot of things to do in Tulsa, especially at night, but I'm going to go over three districts uh, that you definitely need to check out. I'm going to try to do this off of memory and experience. Uh, so we'll see how we do. The first place is Cherry Street. Now, Cherry Street is located just south of downtown, and it's located at basically 15th and um, in Peoria. Now, Cherry Street has a lot of restaurants, um, and a lot of those restaurants have bars in them also. There's a couple bars there, and then uh, it has a little bit of shopping. So this is a great place uh, to go to eat and then maybe go shopping afterwards. Um, a lot of these uh, bars uh, will stay open a little bit later, but like with all these uh, districts that I'm going to go over, everything shuts down around noon. So some of the restaurants that I recommend that you go check out down or on Cherry Street is basically Roosevelt's. Roosevelt's is a really cool bar, and uh, you can get uh, some food there. They're a really beautiful place inside uh, during the Christmas uh, Christmas time, which I'm going to try to find a photo, so hopefully it's up right now so you guys can see it. Andalini's is a local pizza joint. Smoke, uh, Kill Kenny's, uh, it's an Irish pub. And then also you have some shopping down there. Uh, you have Rustic Cuff. If you heard of Rustic Cuff, they have a shop down there. And uh, they have some fitness too, like Cycle Bar and Orange Theory. So 
Cherry Street's a very, very nice place, and uh, I recommend it to anyone like I do with any of my lists. Go check it out. Okay, so the next district or area we're going to talk about is somewhere that I'm familiar with because I used to live in this area or used to work in this area, and that is the Brookside area. Now, this is on Peoria again, but it's around the 34th and 35th Street in Peoria. Then once again, just like Cherry Street, there's a lot of shopping, a lot of, uh, not a lot of bars, and or some restaurants. Some restaurants that I recommend in that area is uh, the Brooktown Brewery, Bricktown Brewery. Uh, it's really, really nice. has local uh, brewery or beer there, and it has a really good hamburger. Torchy's Taco, which is a taco place that I think originated in Austin. If you want the best brunch, I would check out the Brookside by day. And if you just want a really good meal, I would recommend the Brook, the restaurant. Now for bars, there's a couple bars down there, but I would definitely go check out, you know, our bar. That's probably by far my favorite. Uh, Docks, and um, they have a pool hall, but it gets a little smoky in there. It's called Sharky's. And then they also have the warehouse. Shopping, they have a couple of shopping places. Some things that come to my head, though, is uh, Lululemon. They have a Lululemon over there on Brookside. And then another really cool uh, shopping place, it's called Ida Red. So definitely go check out Ida Red. Uh, and they have a lot of local stuff there. So I really highly recommend you go check them out. But Brookside, it's a great area. A lot of people do uh, some day shopping there. And, uh, you know, go check it out and get some lunch. So definitely go check it out. And our last district we're going to talk about is downtown. Now, downtown is divided up into three different districts. And I'm going to talk about them fairly quickly so you can get an idea of what district, it, what each district is. And then you can do, uh, you know, you can find out which one you like the most. So the three di three districts is the Blue Dome District, the Greenwood District, and the Tulsa Arts District. Blue Dome District is where a lot of the bars are at, in my opinion. Um, so you'll have Bassler Hall, you'll have the Max, you'll have uh, McNelly's Pub and Grill, where the bar's upstairs. You'll have Arnie's. Um, so there's quite a bit of bars in that area, and each bar has a little bit of a theme itself. So... Uh, Check out Blue Dome District. You'll have a lot of fun, um, and there's a lot of stuff to do down there also. Now, the Greenwood District is where One Oak Field is. Um, they have a really cool bar and grill called Elgin Park. Uh, if you're going, not even if you're going to go to a game, I recommend that place even if you're not going to go watch the Tolish Drillers. You need to go check it out. But not only bars down there, they have a lot of culture and a lot of exhibits and uh, museums and monuments. So, the Greenwood District also is referred to uh, Black Wall Street. So there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of culture, a lot of um, a lot of things you can see down there. So I'd recommend definitely go check it out, uh, walk around and see some of those monuments and exhibits. Now, just, just uh, west of this area is the Tulsa Art District. Tulsa Art District has Kane's Ballroom, um, and it has some other places that you need to go check out. A restaurant that I recommend is the Tavern. There is a speakeasy, which I'm not going to tell you the name of it. But if you're interested in, in you're in Tulsa and you're interested in checking it out, let me know. I'll get you the name and the directions. But it's kind of a hidden gem for us people here in Tulsa. A bar down there that I would check out is the Valkyrie. It's a, a cocktail bar. They have really nice drinks. And then the last place is the Guther Green. Uh, the Guther Green is basically a lawn, kind of like a uh, smaller not even smaller Central Park. It's just a lawn out in the middle of middle of uh, downtown Tulsa where a lot of uh, free events, a lot of concerts happen at. So uh, if you ever find yourself in that area, go check out those things and you will have fun here in Tulsa. All right, so that's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you need to get a hold of me, you reach me at that information there or down in the description section below. I have all the handles to my social media there. So definitely feel free to reach out. Thank you guys so much for watching the things to do here in Tulsa. I didn't even get to a lot of the stuff I wanted to talk about. So I will bring, they'll bring, will, blah, 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 will be bringing a second video to you soon about more things to do in Tulsa. Uh, if you have any questions, once again, let me know. But that's all I have for you today. Steven, 